Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a match that was played between the current World Chess Champion and top Grandmaster Daniel Naroditsky. Now, this is a match that was played very, very early in the morning, around like 6 a.m. Eastern time. Magnus, who is currently in Canada, staying with the Chess Bros, playing for them in the Pro Chess League. He was out partying all night with Eric, Amon, and the crew, but he came back and decided to play Daniel at Bullet. So one of the questions that many people have asked me over the years is how much would it take for a top grandmaster to lose to a total beginner or even someone who's like around I am strength or lower. Now I've said on many occasions that would require us being close to passing out. However, when you're playing as another top grandmaster, it requires significantly less as this match would show. Now they played 74 games. Magnus had 17 wins, nine draws, and a whopping 48 losses. So Daniel won the match overwhelmingly. Additionally, in the last 15 of 16 games before the final game, which Magnus won, Daniel won 12 games with three draws and zero losses. So let's jump into a few of the selected games. So we're going to take a look at this first game. Daniel playing with the white pieces. Magnus with the black pieces. Obviously, this bullet. One minute, no increment for the entire game. We get d4, d5, knight to c3, played by Daniel, knight to f6, and now bishop f4. Magnus continues with c5, and Daniel plays e4 here. Now, one of the things that's important is when you're playing against someone who's a little bit off-center, let's put it that way, to be, be nice, um, basically you want to be very sharp because the one thing the first thing to go i would say for for a top player when they're playing and they're sort of they're drunk or they've had a bit to drink is the calculation skills are simply not there as much and when you're playing in bullet it's going to be very very hard to think for five to ten seconds on any given move when you've been drinking so we get c takes d4 Daniel continues with queen takes knight c6 attacking the queen on d4 and now we get bishop b5 pinning the knight on c6 Magnus continues with bishop d7. We get bishop takes c6, bishop takes knight, or bishop takes bishop, sorry, e5. Magnus plays knight g8, and here Daniel finds e6. Now, this is a very, very strong move for a couple of reasons. If black can just play e6 here and develop the knight or develop the bishop on this diagonal from f8 to b4, black is doing very well. However, when white plays e6, you prevent black from pushing this e6 pawn. Additionally, after pawn takes pawn is played, Black has two pawns here. Let's just say you play a move like queen c8 and ID5. You cannot develop this bishop on the diagonal as these pawns are stacked. If you ever try to play g6, for example, white can just take the bishop and win the rook in the corner pocket. So it's very, very bad already for Magnus. Magnus proceeds to play f6 here, which really just loses on the spot because after white castles, you're going to struggle to castle the king. You have no development here on the queen side. White is also attacking in the center here. Your pawn on d5 is under attack, so it's a complete disaster. Magnus plays g5. We get bishop to g3 being played by Dania, and now knight to h6. Now, again, Magnus is trying to develop bishop g7, castles king out of the center. But as long as white doesn't trade pieces off the board immediately, white will probably be winning the game. So Dania decides to play knight takes d5, which is a bit of a surprising move here, because Magnus can trade the queens and go bishop g7 and try to grovel, maybe castle the king, bring a rook to d8, say you can castle and play rook to d8. Maybe there's some small hope of survival. Magnus, of course, takes with the bishop here, which instead loses on the spot because now Danny can play the very strong move queen to a4 check here. King has no squares. Pawn on e6 prevents the king from going to either f7 or d7. If you block with the queen, queen takes queen as checkmate. So you have to play bishop c6. Now we get rook takes rook, rook takes rook. And on first glance, you might think, wait, after queen b3, you could take the pawn on g2. Unfortunately, after you take the pawn on g2, white is a nice resource. If white were to say move a pawn, you just win the rook, and that's game over. Maybe not even game over, because honestly, at this point, black has so many pieces here, or, or black's king is so bad that white might still be able to create counterplay. But after bishop takes g2, white is very nice with knight to f3, threatening to move the rook back to the center. If you take the knight, I take your bishop. If you take the rook here before the rook can move away, then you get checkmated by queen b5 check, rook d7, and queen takes rook. So you can't really take the rook. And if you try to develop with bishop b7, now I just slide the rook to the center of the board, and white is completely winning. So Magnus instead goes knight to f5. We get knight to f3 being played. He goes h5 here, hoping to play h4, maybe h3, and put some pressure on this diagonal from the bishop on c6 towards the rook on h1. We get bishop c7, rook c8, queen d3 played by Daniel. Another excellent move here. He's willing to give up the bishop for the knight because black still has no development on the king side. Rook takes bishop is played. Rook d1 is played here by Daniel, threatening mate in one with queen d8. Magnus goes knight d6, trying to prevent it. But now there's this nice tactic with queen g6 check, king d8, and now rook takes d6. Because when black takes the rook, white takes the pawn, attacking the rook and checking the king at the same time. And black will lose the rook on h8 no matter what. We get king e8, queen takes h8, 
rook g7 and now after knight to d4 magnus carlson resigns the game because here he has no development the bishop and the rook are stuck white's knight is going to f5 there's e7 h5 is hanging just a total unmitigated disaster here so magnus resigns this game now what can we take away from it it's very clear that magnus blundered in the opening maybe it's due to being drunk maybe it's also just due to daniel playing really really good moves we don't know it's one game it's inconclusive so let's move on to our next game now in this next game daniel also is white against magnus carlson we get d4 d6 knight to c3 g6 and now we get e4 knight f6 f4 bishop g7 bishop d3 castles and knight to f3 now this is one of the starting positions in the austrian attack of the of the pyrrhic slash modern defense magnus goes e5 here we get takes takes is played here and now we got this move castles being played by daniel now this move is a little bit of a surprise here white can actually take the pawn with the knight and just be up a pawn in the center however as it was a bullet game there's a very good chance that daniel was simply pre-moving and didn't want to waste a lot of time thinking so he castles we get pawn takes pawn bishop takes pawn knight to c6 bishop g5 h6 bishop h4 white wants to keep the pin alive magnus plays g5 here and after bishop g3 and knight h5 magnus is already a little bit better here for a couple of reasons first of all he's got a great bishop on an open diagonal here targeting the knight on c3 as well as the pawn on b2 his knight on h5 puts pressure on the bishop on g3 you can also develop your other bishop to g4 creating your own pin and even g4 here attacking the knight on f3 is very strong as well so all the trumps in this position are for black or magnus in this case we get bishop f2 g4 knight to h4 is played and now knight to e5 now this is maybe not the best move here in fact actually g4 itself maybe isn't best just probably bishop g4 is better but we get knight h4 knight e5 and now we have knight f5 being played magnus trades and now he plays this move queen g5 which is maybe not the worst move in the world but it's not a good move now this is sort of what i was alluding to a little bit earlier in this video now i said that one of the first thing to go when you're drinking and you're, you're playing a game and you're not completely there the first thing that goes is that you have this inability to calculate this inability to stop think and even when you think or you try to think you can't really come up with the right sequence so that's the first thing that goes here and the second thing that goes also is that the ability to sort of intuitively sense the moves is completely out the window as well so magnus plays queen g5 here which is a bad move because now knight e4 is played attacking the queen Magnus takes the pawn but now white has bishop c5 which attacks the queen and the rook at the same time so Magnus will lose the rook here for a bishop now it's not the end of the world the game can go on but it's still intuitive whether it was intuitively or whether you use time here I don't know because I don't have the actually I do have a time stamp don't I do I have a time stamp here let me see takes okay it's two seconds I guess I do kind of have a time stamp um the intuition is not there so queen e6 is played bishop takes rook rook takes bishop we get queen to e2 f5 played by magnus knight d2 played by daniel now this is a surprising move because honestly in this position if i were playing i would go knight g3 in a heartbeat primarily to force these knights off the board black cannot move the knight to f4 you lose your knight if you go knight f6 you simply lose this pawn on f5 so for me i would play knight g3 simply for the fact that black is a trade and now he's this big weakness on f5 you can never push the pawn forward and white can bring the other rook to the center and you should win this game due to the lack of complications so instead Daniel goes knight d2 we got queen b6 king h1 Magnus plays queen g6 rookie one here he goes queen g5 hoping to do something like queen h4 knight g3 maybe g3 maybe knight f4 something along these lines we now get knight to c4 knight takes bishop is played Ma Magnus sorry Dania takes with the pawn we get king h7 queen to e3 is played and now we have f4 queen to e4 king g8 daniel plays knight e5 an excellent move here bringing the knight close to the center if white is able to exchange the knights or the bishop for the knight here for example as long as you can prevent a checkmate threat on the king side white will win this game magnus plays rook to e8 we get queen to d5 check being played king h7 queen e4 king g8 and now check king h7 and d4 to support the knight on e5 magnus continues with c6 we get more tickle tickle here with some checks and now knight f7 played here by by dania a very strong move attacking the queen on g5 but also the rook on e8 here we get knight to g3 daniel takes here and after queen to h5 king g1 magnus tries to take on g3 with the pawn hoping to create a checkmate in one if white takes rook bada bing bada boom game over however you can play queen to d3 check here and now magnus has to resign again if you block with the queen i just swap and then i win the rook you have two lone pawns here which can't do anything and you lose the game 
If you don't block with the queen, the only other option really is to move the king, but then I take the rook with a check on the king. And after bishop f8, there are many ways to win, but simplest is just to take the pawn on g3. And again, black has no mating ideas whatsoever. So this is the second game. Magus gets crushed again. Let's keep going. Next game, we have, this is the third game that we're looking at. Magus playing with the white pieces in this game against Daniel. I will flip the board so we look from the winning side. We get e4 c5 played by daniel magus continues with d4 pawn takes and c3 here magus trying to play the smith mora gambit we get d5 being played by daniel basically rejecting the gambit altogether magnus takes we get knight to f6 here and then c4 now knight f6 is definitely an unusual move daniel probably should have taken on d5 after takes knight c6 knight f3 knight f6 or even e6 here we end up in an alpen sicilian where white has an isolated pawn on d4 instead we get knight to f6 c4 played by magnus e6 knight f3 pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn queen takes pawn and here magnus plays queen d2 now i suspect this is a mouse slip i assume that magnus meant to play queen takes pawn on d4 nonetheless he mouse slips with queen d2 we get knight c6 and now bishop d3 is played and after bishop b4 uh oh spaghetti magnus has to resign again because here he is going to lose either the queen due to the pin or if he plays knight c3, black will simply take the knight, move the bishop away, and win the game. Now, you can say the mouse slip itself is bad enough, but the fact that he then plays bishop d3 here shows that in the, these split-second moments, and even these moments where it's time to think, he cannot quite recover due to the, the alcohol um, due, due to the alcohol intake. Let's leave it at that. Next up, fourth game we have here. This is also a game where Magus has the white pieces against Daniel now the previous one was a very short game so let's see can Magus do something different we get e4 c5 d4 takes and here Magus decides to play queen takes d4 instead of playing the smith more knight c6 queen to e3 played here g6 and here Magus plays knight c3 now perhaps if Magus had had a little bit less to drink he might play a move like c4 bishop g7 and knight c3 this is a system that he has actually played quite a bit in over the board chess with this Meroxy bind the pawns on e4 and c4 against many players like myself Gawain Jones etc instead we get knight c3 bishop g7 bishop to d2 very simple idea for magnus to castle the king out of the center of the board knight f6 is played he castles we get castles kingside for daniel h4 played by magnus d5 played here by daniel naroditsky now d5 very very good move but black needs to do is attack in the center before white can very quickly attack on the king side and by playing d5 here magus is in bad shape because if this pawn ever moves this bishop has a lot of scope either to f5 or to g4 both these diagonals could be very effective we got pawn takes pawn knight takes pawn played now computer likes knight knight before a little bit more but again bullet game very hard to play this we get takes queen g3 is played here and now we get takes bishop takes and bishop h6 check being played here without bishop h6 white would actually be doing quite well if you play like queen b6 for example white will trade the dark square bishops and just go h5 here a lot of threats on the h file potentially white can develop very very quickly as well and black could be in real trouble immediately so bishop h6 very very good move here bishop d2 played by magnus you could go f4 as well but after queen to c7 now the pawn f4 is weak and when you move like the knight to e2 after bishop f5 here or even a move like e5 potentially black is doing very very well once again so we get bishop d2 knight to b4 played here by daniel very aggressive move here hoping that magnus will play bishop takes bishop because now after knight takes pawn king to b1 queen takes d1 check king takes knight you can throw in this check on e6 here and after white plays a move like c4 you very simply capture the bishop on f1 and after bishop takes f8 you have queen takes c4 and mate will be following very very soon due to this wide open king on a2 which has no defenders nearby so we get f4 instead from magnus daniel plays queen b6 here we get a3 being played and now daniel in typical fashion one of the things that daniel's always been really really good at doing is sacrificing and playing aggressively here he snaps his pawn on c2 and it's a very very strong move because after king takes knight we got bishop to f5 check here white's king is very open now you have these double ops on great squares you also can bring the rooks to the center of the board immediately and white here has one two three pieces on their original squares magnus plays bishop d3 rook a c8 is played here we get king to b1 and now after queen to b3 yet again magnus carlson resigns another game because in this position your rook and your bishop are both under attack we have a classic right triangle you cannot move your bishop to say e2 to guard the rook because then that puts your king in check if you move your rook away you simply lose the bishop and after king a1 rook to c2 
you're getting mated on b2 very soon if you play bishop c1 i just stack the rooks even bishop g7 retreating here threatening maiden one and the situation is is uh not even bad you just lose on the spot so you can't really move the rook you can't move the bishop if you move the knight again same thing i just take the bishop play rook to c2 rook to b1 i guess bishop c1 again and once again after bishop g7 you're simply getting checkmated here if you take the bishop i go bishop takes pawn check if you take it's checkmate if you go king to b1 i go bishop c3 king can't move and after bishop b2 queen takes b2 would be checkmate so this is another game that magnus gets crushed out of the opening now i do suspect if magnus had time he pro had time or wasn't as um inebriated he probably would have been able to play this a little bit better like for example after knight b4 bishop c4 is a move that guards all the pawns alas he didn't find it and he loses yet again so now for another game this time magus also playing with the white pieces against daniel game starts with d4 we get knight to f6 magus plays c3 daniel plays g6 typical king's indian setup daniel has always loved the king's indian we get knight to d2 being played here and now we get bishop g7 e4 and d and castles bishop to d3 d6 knight f3 knight c6 castles and e5 black tries to contest the center here white already has a big center but black tries to fight for it as well so we get pawn takes knight takes knight takes pawn takes now for anybody who's curious there was a game in the world blitz championship i believe it was might might have been rapid but i think it was blitz um where magus had a very similar position to this i think the queen was on e2 uh with the, from the black side against jan Kristoff duda from poland a game that magus won in fine fashion so he's very very familiar with these structures we got knight to f3 queen to e7 guarding the pawn on e5 queen to c2 rook to d8 all pretty standard nothing too crazy here from either side h3 is played and now we get knight h5 from Daniel trying to activate the knight put it on f4 and create threats on the king side potentially maybe even to also play f5 here bishop e3 is played knight to f4 magus goes rook f d1 knight takes bishop rook takes rook takes knight we get the swap and now bishop e6 is played now again pretty standard position here black is maybe marginally better with the bishop pair but white should have no real issues due to the symmetrical pawn structure all all the pawns are on the same same files no imbalances whatsoever should be fine alas magnus plays rook d1 now this is a mistake because now black can play bishop takes a2 winning a pawn now yet again this is sort of the intuition playing fast nothing really clicking for magnus at this point he just hangs the pawn on a2 we get c4 being played magnus trying to trap the bishop with some kind of b3 daniel plays queen b4 another excellent move here because now you attack both the pawns on c4 and b2 white cannot block with the pawn because then you simply capture with your queen and the bishop will get out additionally if you try to play rook c1 guarding the pawn i just snap the b2 pawn and you will lose as well although maybe actually after rook c1 it's not quite so simple because if you take maybe white can play queen d2 with the idea that after you trade you have rook a1 because the knight covers the squares so maybe there are some tricks that still exist at any rate queen d7 is played by magnus we get bishop takes pawn not queen takes pawn by the way because after after queen takes pawn i think white can go rook c1 here with the idea of rook c7 creating a classic kebab on the seventh rank so we get bishop takes c4 queen takes c7 is played and now we get bishop e6 and here magnus plays this move knight g5 now daniel has actually blundered the game away with this bishop e6 move the only move that daniel has considered is a move like rook d8 but after rook d8 takes takes and queen f8 at the very least black is black is going to draw this end game here and he will not lose but magnus had the opportunity here after bishop e6 to think for a couple of seconds using two to three seconds and he instantly plays knight g5 now if i were playing this position and i'm very sharp the first thing i would think is wait rook d8 is a move but after takes 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 queen f8 you think for that like one two seconds okay nothing works and then you probably are like wait is there anything else to force queen d8 or rook d8 in and i suspect that with a little bit more time of course everybody would spot bishop c5 um but again intuition and these 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 critical moments mag is not able to find it due to the state due to the state that he was in now bishop c5 does simply win the game here because the queen guards the bishop and after black moves the queen to say let's say queen takes e4 white is rook d8 check here and now you'll notice the difference the bishop covers this critical f8 square so after the rooks come off and black blocks queen takes f8 would be checkmate the best that black can probably do is something like queen a4 rook d8 and queen to e8 but after takes takes and queen takes b7 you're down a queen for a rook and you will just lose so magnus plays knight g5 instead daniel goes bishop to b3 here yet again allowing bishop c5 now here it's not quite as effective because after bishop c5 black can take and play bishop takes d1 and while this is losing at least here you have a rook and a bishop for the queen magnus again misses it he plays rook d7 
we get rook to f8 being played here by Daniel Bishop c5 finally played because now it's it's screaming to be played due to basic 101 tactics we get queen one check king to h2 and and Magnus is actually winning this game we get queen c1 here Bishop takes f8 queen to f4 played Magnus goes king g1 Bishop takes f8 and in this position let's let's do an assessment Magnus has a rook a knight and a queen against a queen and two bishops he has a rook for a bishop everything is on the seventh rank these pawns are also very very weak he should win so what does Magnus do he plays the great move knight takes f7 now in the game of chess I don't know if this is actually saying or not but one of the things that I've heard many times over the years is that the hardest moves to see in chess are backwards diagonal moves so the bishop being able to move backwards and snap this knight now Magnus I assume just missed this but he played it anyway and after Bishop takes f7 white is still kind of okay here after Queen takes b7 because if black goes Bishop c5 trying to create a checkmate white can check with Queen c8 and you have to go back with Bishop f8 so after Queen takes b7 computer thinks that white is still kind of in the game but Magnus here just tilts off unsurprisingly because he probably thought he just wins on the spot with Knight takes f7 plays g3 we get Queen to f6 he plays queen takes b7 bishop c5 is played here he plays queen c8 correctly preventing black from winning the pawn on f2 due to the check of the king and the bishop bishop f8 is played we get rook takes a7 bishop e6 played here by daniel and now magus plays the incredible move queen to c5 here now queen to c5 of course is a pure 100 pure Botez gambit as now daniel just plays bishop takes queen on c5 and magus yet again has to resign here so what can we take away from these games we can take away that Magnus was inebriated very clearly if not outright drunk uh maybe those mean the same thing I'm not sure but Magnus clearly not in his best state but nonetheless Daniel played some very very good chess here and he shows that when top grandmasters have been out drinking partying celebrating whatever you want to call it they do not play at the same high level that they normally do um so for all the people who have been wondering over time what happens when top players are drunk we can say thank you to Magnus Carlson for showcasing um how much it takes or, or how how well we do play when we've been drinking too much because normally when we're drinking we aren't playing chess for the most part unless it's after a tournament but that is a story for another day at any rate thank you so much you guys for watching this video make sure to hit the subscribe button below if you have not already and we'll be back with more great YouTube content in the very near future see you guys soon have a good one bye